Well, good evening. This is Houndog Steve coming to you on the 11th of March, which is a Sunday evening. And uh, I'd like to talk to you this evening about a little um, issue that I have been thinking about with the Crown Land Patents. Now, you remember a short while ago I did a video on Crown Land Patents and how to get them. Uh, here is the uh, downloadable package from the Ontario Landowners Association, and I will... Um, post that link below uh, so that you can go there and download your own package and I'll just read what it says on the front it says request your crown land patent uh, that grants you the land and tenements forever recognized by the courts the crown land patent is a legal set of rules or an agreement which is known as contract law an act for a promise and a promise for an act and uh, once you send off your application uh, this will come in the mail. Uh, it is uh, takes about four or five months in the province of Ontario and uh, here is the actual grant from the Crown itself to the original purchaser of this property. Okay, uh, so it's a very important document and uh, the government really doesn't like people getting these Crown Land patents because uh, they give you the jurisdiction over your property. And um, this is going to be very, very difficult for them to fight in the courts. And from what I've uh, been hearing, you know, whenever these things do go to court, uh, the Crown mysteriously doesn't show up and the case just kind of uh, dissolves away into nothing. Okay, so that should have brought you up to date on uh, Crown Land Patents. So uh, we also did another video, and it was about the province of Ontario selling the Ontario Land Registry Office to a company called Terranet. Now, I'm going to cut out that little piece of uh, video that uh, uh, talks about that particular sale and what happened. And after you see that, we'll come back and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about a problem that might be arising. And they also come from this firm called Terranet. Terranet is something we need to speak about. Okay, before we do that, I want to explain to you carefully what happens when you take a written database and change it into a digital database. This is our business card for citizens of direct democracy. Here's my name, Steve's name, John Snyder's, and here's our telephone numbers. Now I've put them into columns like this, column of first names, second names, phone numbers. Now these in, in uh, internet stuff, this is called a field. So we've got three fields and you normally see these on a spreadsheet. Okay, let's move on. Now I've coloured them so in all the The first field, the first name is a green field and the second name, surname is a blue one and the phone numbers are here. If you take this information and you put it into another spreadsheet you need three fields to get the information in. Okay. But the land registry which we're talking about which gives us the value of our house etc etc it's got a whole lot of stuff in it. Names, dates, maps, liens, all these things are in there. So an intelligent person says I will look at all the stuff we want and then I'll make my spreadsheet so that it all fits in. That is kind of vital. All right. But that is not what happened. When Terranet set up, it borrowed a software program from India and the number of fields in that software didn't fit our registry, our land registry in Ontario. So what in fact happens is they say, well, we've got three things to put in, but we've only got two fields. So one of them we can't put in at all. Oh, too bad. But what happens is that you lose valuable information. You've got the three names of the people, but you can't phone them. So this is completely useless. And this is exactly what's happened in the transfer of the f information from our government into Terranet. And this is how it happened. The Ontario Land Registry was here. It goes back hundreds of years. Many of the documents were handwritten, and that's why I made this all nice and squiggly. 
there was a shell corporation created and there was a secret contract. And what happened is that the government sold to this shell corporation the rights to run this whole show. And eventually it trickled through to Tetranet. But in the beginning, there were no staff, there were no money, no, no expertise. So the, this was a nothing organization. Here was a cunning sleight of hand, basically says, we will sell this to you, and then you fix everything afterwards, and you'll give us a lot of money, and that will go into the government. So Ter Terranet, has, they've developed it, and they own it. This is terrifying. They actually own the Ontario Land Registry, and they operate this thing, the electronic one. Now, the same thing they tried last year in England, and this is what's the reaction there. Privatization could destabilize all that is held dear, and by this they mean title to your land and your property, and lead to a chaos and mayhem for the housing market for the sake of a short-term return for, to His Majesty's Treasury. So in England they know exactly why this is. This kind of thing is to pump money into the government to pay down the debts, to make them look good, or to pay their salaries. So that, this is how this came about. But we're not finished. OMERS, the Ontario Municipal Employment Retirement System, is very wealthy, 72 billion. This is the money that pays out pensions and things. But it owns a company called Borealis, and Borealis owns Terranet. So this is a very strange thing because the people actually think that because it's called the Ontario Municipal Employees, that it's owned by the government. It's not owned by the government at all. It's a private company which owns this, which owns this. And this group owns all the documents for the land ownership. And this Terranet is related to Equifax. And uh, because they made Equifax Canada and Terranet Inc. signed a strategic partnership. Now the word strategic is a bit dodgy, but you can see something not very nice must be going on. Equifax has gone through a scandal, it's hacked this year, had 57,000 complaints. So these two are linked together, and lo and behold, up here, MPAC and the Ontario government and Terranet, they're all mixed in together as well, to form this standardised digital database. The result of it is that these people can manipulate the land registry database and you end up with something called title theft. And what happens here is you can erode the database very easily if it's in digital form. It's not so easy if it's a piece of paper. And suddenly you find that you can't prove that you own the property on which you live. And this chap here, Mark McDermott, who is an expert in this field, he gave a speech which I listened to the other day, and he's furious because his mother lost their farm by exactly this process. So here's a lot of mucky stuff. It's all tied up with politics and banks and so on and so forth. And it's something which a direct democracy government would never permit to happen in the first place. Okay, so now you see what happened. And uh, that Terranet is uh, digitizing all of the Ontario Land Registry Office and destroying the paperwork. Okay, so uh, I have a friend of mine who's going through this situation right now uh, where he's in an argument with a um, building next to him and he has a 10 foot easement on the edge of his property. And uh, so he has the original title search that shows that easement, the original drawings of, of, the, uh, of the area. However, the person who owns the building next door, they have done a title search and it doesn't show the easement and it only goes back to owners. Okay, now it, it might sound like I'm gonna bounce around a little bit, but I'm gonna tell you a story. This is why it's come to mind, okay, what's happening here. Uh, a channel that I go to on YouTube is a chap, uh, Joe is his name, JSNIP4, down in Florida. Okay, uh, back, a ways back, when the mortgage crisis was taking place, okay, uh, it turned out that Florida, which is an unregulated state, 
had banks who were robo-signing the mortgage information and then selling the mortgage. Okay, now robo-signing was a person digitizing the information. The banks were destroying the paperwork because it cost a lot of money to store all of this paperwork. Anyway, uh, so Joe asked the bank where his mortgage money was going to. And of course, because the bank had sold the note to another company and they'd been sold probably again to a third, fourth or fifth company, Bank of America didn't actually know where that money was going to. Okay, so uh, Joe said, I, well, I'm not gonna pay my mortgage until you can tell me where my money is going. Well, it ended up in court and uh, of course the judges have been throwing out this because they have broken the chain of title. When they robo-signed, they broke that paper chain of title, which goes back to the original owner of the mortgage. Okay, so when you purchase a house, uh, there should be a title search. And here is mine. Okay, and mine does go all the way back. Right here, you probably can't read it right here, but it actually says uh, the crown, from the crown to this chap Snowden who bought my property. And you can see a continual chain of ownership right the way up to the last owner. So all I need to do is get a new title search on this property and it will link me as the next person in line. Okay, so what I'm thinking is that the way the province is going to break these crown land patents is to break the chain of title. And because this company, uh, Terranet, bought a program that can't hold all of the data, they, that's why they're going only two ownerships back and then destroying the paper record. Now you've broken the chain of title. And this is exactly the sort of thing that the government does uh, within the bureaucracy. Okay, this is the way they thwart uh, your ability to take control of your own life and your own property. Now, uh, sure, there are going to be people like me who happen to have the original titles, and I can prove a chain of ownership from the beginning to the end, but there will be a certain percentage of people who've lost those, uh, you know, in the, you know, shuffles or cleanups or cleanouts or that kind of thing, and um, they're not going to be able to show chain of title. And so a few more people are removed from the ability to say, I have jurisdiction over my property. Uh, it, it may seem strange, but these documents are incredibly important, as tedious and as boring as they sound like having chain of title and having this continuous chain. Courts do recognize this kind of stuff. And for the same reason that uh, Joe's uh, mortgage was thrown out by the court, and actually Bank of America ended up paying Joe some money to settle the case. Okay, so um, yes, these documents are important. These documents do give you control and jurisdiction of your own property. And uh, as I say, the government does not like these documents and uh, that was actually brought home to me a little while back when I mentioned to a friend of mine who's a lawyer about crown land patents and he said "Ooh, I, I don't like those things hmm there you go very telling why don't they like crown land patents there you go because they give away the power to the individual and why is that important because as Stalin said uh, ownership of land uh, gives people something to fight for. That's why he took away land ownership and forced the kulaks into collectives uh, over in the Ukraine there because as long as the person had a piece of land that they owned, they would fight to the death to defend that piece of property because it's all they had. It was their entire economic system. And uh, Stalin said that this is the root of capitalism. Okay, and I think that that is being played out in our society and government today. We are going back into cultural Marxism. And uh, to achieve that, property ownership must be taken away from the public. And uh, it's being done 
uh, in little pieces here and there. Like I say, when, when most people buy their houses, uh, you only purchase the surface rights. And that's it. You have no jurisdiction above or below your property. And if you don't have jurisdiction over those other areas or the entire cube that is on the footprint of your property that goes to the center of the earth and as high as the heavens, and again, you know, you, you, you see the antiquated nature of the language here. Okay, but this is the language they use, still in force today. Okay, but if you don't have jurisdiction over that entire cube of space, you do not own your property. And actually, uh, it, I was just noticing as I was looking here uh, at the changeover, and... Um, I don't know if you can read this list, it's very small print down here, these words down here, okay, uh, it says, um, deposit, grant, grant, discharge, deposit, transfer, 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 charge, assignment, transfer, transfer, and all of these words, these are, these are the connecting words and the connecting dates that correspond with uh, the transfer of title of this property. So anyway, I am just, I'm guessing here. I am just trying to put two and two together. I, I have no, I haven't found this anywhere on the internet. I haven't found it in any legal books about the transfer of property. Um, but I'm looking at the examples that I've seen around me and uh, putting two and two together. And I hope this isn't the case. But if anyone has any information, if there is anybody with knowledge of what is actually going on here, I would really appreciate hearing that. Uh, make a note in the comments below or uh, send me a message because I would like to get this clear as well. I have contacted the Ontario Landowners Association and they have a paralegal that works uh, for them and with them and uh, I'm still waiting to hear back from them uh, on what their opinion is on this situation. But uh, it is a very, yes, it's a very underhanded way to strip away some of our power. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it informative. And uh, please, if you have, uh, like and subscribe below. And uh, we'll be talking to you real soon. You have yourself a great week coming up. You take care now. See ya.